Welcome to the Online Graduate Research Forum for Spring 2021. My name is Diane, and I'll be your presenter for this short YouTube interactive PowerPoint. I'm a graduate student in the Master of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies program in the Department of Occupational Workforce and Leadership Studies. The title of my research study is Aiding Hard of Hearing and Deaf Students at Texas State University. A little bit of background about my practicum. I'm exploring a new career field as a hard of hearing deaf consultant. And so I'm assisting students that are utilizing services of the Office of Disability Services at Texas State University. Some of my objectives were to learn how the Office of Disability Services helps the hard of hearing deaf individuals utilize the different services with the classes on campus and online. Um, this includes assistive technology, it could be interpreters or uh, captioning in a classroom or Zoom with captions. The other thing I wanted to do was use the knowledge that I learned to help me shape my cons cons consultation career after graduation. Um, I would like to help individuals that are working at state agencies um, find the different accommodations that are available to them that they may not be aware of. I would also like to um, research how I can help these individuals with the different accommodations and assistive technology available to them so that they're not having to suffer through thinking that there's no option for them if they can't hear in uh, meetings at work or uh, Zoom meetings when there are options available to them. So um, doing this type of uh, assistive technology at Texas State University is going to help me learn the expectations and functions that I will need to have a successful consultation business. The first practicum highlight I want to discuss is the engagement I had with my site supervisors, with the students and professors and others that I emailed for my practicum. Because I'm hearing impaired, conversations in person are a struggle for me. So being able to email my site supervisor and the student and the professor and receive feedback via email was very important for me because I didn't feel like I missed any information and so I was able to use the information to help with my practicum rather than feeling like, oh, I missed a part of a conversation or did they say this? Instead, I was able to refer to the emails and use that to build up my practicum. The other highlight, believe it or not, is COVID and snowpocalypse. COVID because it allowed me to find other ways to connect with people um, because face-to-face -face was not an option on campus. So I had to email or find, you know, find my information a different way rather than face-to-face. -face. And snowpocalypse, well, I would just say that we was uh, <laughs> definitely interesting, but it did teach me to keep going. And despite um, COVID restrictions and loss of power and water, the ability to keep going is still there for me. And I was still able to complete my practicum. So I was very proud of myself for that. The last highlight that I want to discuss is the other careers. So I wanted to be a teacher when I was younger in elementary school, and I sort of lost that over the years. But during my practicum this semester has sort of brought back the feeling of maybe it's something that I want to pursue again. And the other thing that I have learned is about app building uh, for phones and tablet. I believe that that's something that I would also enjoy doing because it would help me build something that would help myself 
Um, I struggle, like I said, with face-to-face -face conversation. So having an app that would allow me to read what the other person is saying um, would be very helpful to me. So that's something that I'm interested in pursuing as well. So I'm going to be looking into that too and trying to decide what I want to do after I graduate. So one of the books I use for my practicum is the Best Practices in Assessing Those Who Are Deaf or Hard of Hearing. And what this book discusses is a need for the ideological approaches and the instructions of deaf and hard of hearing students. It also lays out the arguments for um, using nonverbal assessments on deaf and hard of hearing students rather than verbal assessments. So what this did, what what the book did was it, it broke down um, nonverbal abilities by the level of education and by doing psychological measurements to gauge the level of hearing impairment or deafness in individuals. And it also broke down whether the hearing loss was congenital, meaning present at birth, or um, adventitious, which is acquired after birth. The second book that I chose to discuss is the inclusion of deaf and hard of hearing students in mainstream classrooms. And basically what this book did was break down how technology plays into um, assistive technology for deaf and hard of hearing students learning in the classroom. And so sometimes deaf and hard of hearing students have difficulty following teachers' instructions in the classroom. And so the students end up feeling left out. Despite high academic achievement or communication, they still feel left out because of um, they not getting all the information. And then the last book I chose was um, the Special Education Transition Services for Students Who Are Deaf and Hard of Hearing. And this one just discussed the transitions of being deaf and hard of hearing through school age, college to adulthood. And so it also went into how the educational realm can be intimidating and daunting for some individuals and confusing. So this book focused on the three educational transition periods, early intervention, school age, and adulthood, and provided recommendations and best practices for each period. So one strength of my practicum is realizing how much work I will need to put into my consulting job after graduation. So there's a lot of moving parts that I need to take into consideration if I choose to be a consultant. And going through this practicum, I realized that I have the ability to do all the work necessary to be a successful consultant um, for state agencies, uh, or actually for employees that work in state agencies. One weakness was online learning. So not being able to be on campus to help the students and face-to-face -face interaction was a little bit of a letdown, but completely understandable because of COVID. So I also wasn't able to shadow my supervisor in person. Most of our interactions took place via, well, all of our interactions took place via email. So that was a little bit of, I, I think, a weakness of my practicum. Um, one opportunity that did come up was I did have a professor that was very forthcoming when I answered uh, asked questions of several of my past professors, and one of the professors did respond with this um, very, it was a very open response. It was completely, it, it caught me off guard because he was very open about how he still needs to change to be more inclusive of students that have disabilities. So him being up front and open like that was really, it was unexpected, but it was very, very welcome. And I did thank him for being so honest because it also kind of goes with the threat that I'm using on my reflection, which is a silent discrimination. Um, there's a lot of people that still, they're not, Openly, openly discriminating against deaf and hard of hearing students, 
there, there's a lot of individuals that would rather not deal with deaf and hard of hearing students. There's a lot of employers that would not like to deal with deaf and hard of hearing people because they don't want to make the accommodations. So that is still very much a threat, silent discrimination. The whole reason for my practicum was to get a master's degree so I can be a consultant for a state agency employees that are deaf and hard of hearing. So that was my uh, original goal when I started my practicum. As I went through my practicum, I also am thinking about becoming a college professor because I really enjoyed interacting with the students and figuring out what they wanted and what they needed to be successful in college. And as a hearing impaired individual, I feel like I could provide valuable information and um, self-advocacy advice for students. So uh, college professors definitely on the, uh, on the agenda again as, as something to look at. And then app builder for phones and tablets. That's something I think that could be important um, when I'm having difficulty speaking with somebody, if I could have an app that would help me uh, understand what they're saying, or at least give me a general idea of what they're saying. So that's definitely something I'm interested in as well. On the YouTube page below, please indicate your anonymous preference for this practicum by clicking on one of these two icons. Also, please post your comments or questions in the YouTube comments section below. I will respond to your inquiries posted between April 6th and 17th through this webpage.